it's me vinish rashi i love to share the knowledge that i gained after doing post graduation in microbiology if you are from the same field then this video will definitely help you today i will guide you on the topic of the standard plate count method if you want to read about other topics of microbiology then visit our website microbial notes we will discuss the standard plate count method from its objectives to the advantages we will learn all first what is the standard plate count method come on tell me if you know about this technique in the comments and if you are unaware of this technique then listen to me carefully so the term plate count refers to the technique that determines the number of bacteria in water food and clinical samples over time this method has been named variously as bacterial plate count and aerobic or mesophilic gluni count method it examines the bacterial population through the enumeration of colonies form under specific conditions this method is widely used in microbiology to assess the overall quality of food and other samples more or less in the probiotics industry traditional plate count procedures are used to measure probiotic potency emphasizing the relevance and applicability of plate count methods in diverse fields whereas this method also employs the dilution technique in which we prepare serial dilution of the sample to achieve countable colonies on agar plates this approach quantifying microbial populations in samples it involves systematically diluting a sample to obtain plates with an appropriate number of colonies In addition to that it involves quantitative analysis of the sample by determining CF use that are colony forming unit this method allows researchers to accurately measure the concentration of viable microorganisms in various environments CF use counts provide a numerical representation of the microbial load that helps to assess the contamination levels and the overall quality Behind every method there are certain objectives. Let's discuss them. Microbiologists have utilized the standard plate count method to estimate bacterial populations in water, food or other materials. This method can also examine the microbial populations in a sample and provide valuable insights into overall quality. By doing this we can get pure organisms from mixed sample. Moreover it separates the microorganisms form from the suspension by examining the colony forming units per milliliter to measure viable microbial populations. and lastly it allows us to examine the microorganisms based on their unique colony characteristics moving toward the principle of this method it is very important to understand the principle of this method because it helps us to execute this procedure without contamination and get precise results to start carefully inoculate broth that has the viable bacteria into an agar medium during incubation the viable bacteria proliferate and form distinct colonies these colonies are counted to provide the bacterial population in the sample then you need to serially dilute a liquid sample of 1 ml and inoculate it into the molten agar at 42-45 degrees celsius the diluted sample was mixed with molten agar in a petri plate and incubated until the colony grew the incubation of the solidified medium at 37 degrees celsius from 24 to 48 hours creates an ideal setting for microbial growth and forms distinct colonies 
After incubation, viable microorganisms from the sample form separate colonies both inside and on the surface of the medium. Colony counting is done by the formula in which the total number of colonies are multiplied by dilution factor and then divided by the volume of the specimen. So what do you need to have to start the standard plate count method? First, you need to have an autoclave or sterilizer to ensure complete sterilization of equipment, materials and media before use. This is crucial to enhance the efficiency of this method. Next come the clean glass test tubes and sterile tips for precise serial dilution of the sample. This helps to minimize the contamination risks. The type of agar depends on the microorganisms being tested. Use clean metal loops for transferring diluted samples onto the agar plates. It shows that the inoculation is done without contamination. Automated cloning counters with advanced image recognition technology are used for accurate counting of clonies on agar plates. An incubator is essential for providing controlled temperature and humidity for the proper growth of microorganisms. Some recent advancements include smart features like real-time monitoring and optimization in an incubator. Single or multi-channel pipettes are vital for the precise dispensing of samples. Modern pH meters with advanced sensor technologies offer precise measurements of the pH values. It helps to ensure the optimal pH values for microbial cultures. Recent sterilization techniques have improved the purity of sterile water to guarantee contamination-free solutions for accurate sample dilution and media preparation. Sterile media formulation under optimized conditions allow specific organisms to grow without contamination. Heading toward the step-by-step -step procedure of standard plate count method. First, you need to perform serial dilution test tubes for precise microbial enumeration. Create a 10 fold dilution by adding 1 milliliter of sample to 9 ml dilution of 10 to the power 1. Ensure uniform distribution by thorough mixing of the diluted sample for accurate dilution ratios. Transfer 1 ml from 1 to the second dilution then 1 ml from 2nd to the 3rd dilution and so on. Maintain cleanliness during dilution by using new and sterile pipettes for each step of dilution. Add 1 ml or 0.1 ml from each dilution into sterile petri dish for good colony growth. Prepare agar medium and let it cool down to the temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. Add 15 ml of agar to each battery plate with the diluted sample. Ensure even distribution of dilution in the medium by gently circulating each plate. Before incubation, allow the plates to settle under optimized condition for subsequent microbial growth. Promote colony development by inverting the plates and incubating them upside down at 37 degrees Celsius. For 24 to 48 hours. Now, how do you analyze and conclude the results of the standard plate count method? Well, it's pretty simple. To find the result, first you need to count the clonies either by mechanical hand counter or cubic colony counter. Choose the plates with colony count between 
thirty to three hundred. Because plates with more or fewer colonies are too numerous or too few to count. Here you need to remember two terms. One is T and T C, that is too numerous to count, and T F T C, that is too few to count. Determine the concentration of microorganisms per milliliter by applying the formula in which we divide the number of colonies with the dilution factor. In example one, if we observe 50 colonies on a plate and the dilution factor is 1 in 10 to the power 6, whereas the volume of dilution is 1 ml, then the result will be 5 into 10 to the power 7 cfus per ml. Whereas in second example, if we have 50 colonies on a plate and the dilution factor is 10 to the power 5, volume added is 0.1 ml, then the result will be 5 into 10 to the power 6 cells per 0.1 ml. But if we want the result in 1 ml then the answer will be 5 into 10 to the power 7 cfus per ml document the determined bacterial counts per milliliter in the lab report based on the conducted experiments for increased accuracy compute the average of duplicate bacterial counts per milliliter from the plated dilutions and there need to be certain precautions while performing the standard plate count method number 1 adhere to safety protocols by treating the unidentified clinical specimens at potential hazards and follow the updated safety guidelines for laboratory practices Maintain a sterile workplace by ensuring complete sterilization of petri plates and media before use. Align with the recent quality standards and recommendations. Use sterile water and pure media for serial dilution. Choose a solvent that does not affect microorganisms growth. Dilute samples precisely to achieve a viable microbial load ranging from 20 to 300 cfu per ml. Acknowledge that the results outside this range may pose challenges in colony counting. Please emphasize the critical importance of precise measurements during serial dilution to guarantee accuracy in the process. Enhance precision while transferring samples by using a micropipette into petri plates. Adhere to the latest laboratory standards for the recommended volume of agar. Align with US FDA recommendations of 12 to 15 ml per 10 cm petri plate, whereas USP allows 15 to 20 ml per 10 cm of petri plate. Prioritize thorough blending of samples with agar before solidification. This ensures that the microorganisms are properly distributed. Maintain the temperature between 40 to 45 degrees Celsius during the process of pouring or mixing with samples. Prevent clumping or premature solidification according to the best practices. Accurate labeling of each petri plate with essential details like dilution factors before introducing samples is important. Verify labeling during the sample dispensing to align with the specified concentrations. Just understanding the technique is not enough. You should also know the real world applications of this method to understand its practical approach. First of all scientists utilize the plate count method to quantify cell concentration in a sample. This method provides crucial insights into microbial density that is a cornerstone for microbiological analysis. 
Using the plate count method is pivotal for constructing bacterial growth curves. It enables the researchers to investigate the dynamic pattern of bacterial expansion over time. In scientific investigations, the plate count method is employed by the researchers to assess the impact of diverse environmental effects on the bacterial growth. This method significantly contributes to evaluating microbial response to changing environmental conditions. The plate count method stands as an essential tool for examining the influence of different growth factors on the bacterial growth. It provides valuable information on how different conditions and factors impact microbial populations. Now let's discuss the benefits of the standard plate count method. The plate count method facilitates the direct enumeration of viable colonies. It offers a precise measure of living organisms in a sample. It is well known for its sensitivity. The method helps in detecting low bacterial counts and proves invaluable for assessing samples with minimal microbial concentrations. Distinguishing itself, the plate count method eliminates the requirement for pre-solidified agar. It simplifies the counting of microorganisms as compared to the other alternative methods. With broad spectrum applications, the method extends its utility to diverse sample types including environmental and clinical samples. There are some disadvantages of this method as well. The plate count method compared to other techniques like streak and spread plating requires a large setup and processing time. This is due to various steps of preparing, inoculating and incubating the agar plates. The method becomes particularly time intensive and laborious when analyzing a large number of samples. Next is heat sensitivity. During the plate count method, the heat sensitive microorganisms are at risk of losing viability. This is because they can endure just a brief exposure of temperature between 45 degree to 50 degree Celsius. Otherwise, it can affect the accuracy of the results as some microorganisms might not survive the heat. The next challenge is embedded clunies. In the standard plate count method, clunies that are embedded within the agar tend to be significantly smaller compared to the dose on the surface. It is challenged to accurately count all colonies as the smaller embedded ones can be easily overlooked, leading to potential underestimation of microbial counts. Next comes the slower growth of obligate microbes. Obligate microbes which require oxygen for growth have slower growth rates when embedded in the depth of the agar. This is due to the reduced availability of oxygen in these regions compared to the surface. As a result, the overall accuracy and reliability of the plate count method can be impacted. Thank you all. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Let's connect via email and follow us to stay tuned. Please subscribe and comment about the topic you want us to teach in the next video. Till then, goodbye.